There's an old saying in journalism, if one person tells you it's raining and another tells you it's not, you're not supposed to report both sides. You're supposed to look outside and see for yourself. I'm afraid times have changed. Nowadays, journalists see what they want to see. Just look at the recent riots in France. We showed you the pictures on Monday. There were vehicles burning on the streets, police officers chasing and arresting protesters. It was clearly evidence of long-running problems in France, like racism or the backlash against immigration. But Western media did not see it that way. Look at this article in Politico. It's called The Politics of the French Riots. In fact, let me read out what it says. This is largely an insurrection without aims. The riots are, in a sense, anti-France. Thank God it wasn't in India or Bangladesh or South Africa, because then the riots would have been pro-democracy. Next, we have the Washington Post. They say the protests <laughs> will create an opening for the far right. How about that? These people were outraged by systemic racism. They were fed up of being treated as second-class citizens, but when they protest, they're accused of helping the far right. Classy from the folks at Washington Post. Guardian also had a problematic take. Look at their headline. A grim tale of the growing gulf between haves and have-nots. They're calling it a class war. Maybe there is a class element to it. But shooting a 17-year-old at point blank is not just a class problem. It's a race problem. This was targeted racism. Guardian had no problem using such language about India. Look at their report on the Delhi riots. And let me quote that for you. The violence in Delhi is not a riot. It's, it's targeted anti-Muslim brutality. I have more examples for you. The New York Times is calling this a new challenge for Macron. They're not blaming his policies for it. They're simply calling it a challenge. Wall Street Journal is not even concerned about the protests. They're worried about the French cops. Look at two of their reports. French riots test Macron's loyalty to police, as if that's the bigger issue here. Another headline says, behind the riots lie years of anger over police conduct. So it's not systemic racism. It's not anti-immigration sentiments either. It's all about police conduct. The New York Times has said the same thing. French police won authority to shoot at drivers, but got no training whatsoever. Do you really need training for that? Not shooting 17-year-olds comes naturally to most people. I guess in France, you have to be taught. Now compare this to how they cover Indian police. Look at the same New York Times during the Delhi riots, and I'm quoting. How Delhi's police turned against Muslims. A few anecdotes, a handful of statements, and job done. The NYT published a smear piece on Delhi police, but in France, it's all about the lack of training. You can understand what the strategy is here. Don't blame the leader. Don't blame the institutions. Instead, blame complex issues like class and history. But elsewhere, it's the opposite. Let me also show you another set of headlines. This is from Le Monde. It's a French newspaper. India's Modi fails to respond to an outpouring of hatred against Muslims. They're going straight after the head of government. Now look at their, their coverage of Macron. Rights in France, Macron bases three-stage response on empathy, firmness, and a moral jolt. I guess arresting 3,000 people is empathy. And so is suggesting that social media should be limited. The fact is social media can inflame such situations. But when other governments do it, it is draconian. When Macron does it, it's a moral jolt, whatever that means. And it's not just India. The Western media does it with most Asian and African leaders. Look at Politico's headline on Bangladesh. Does Bangladesh's prime minister still believe in democracy? Again, a direct attack on the head of government. A couple of reports question the arrest of government critics, so Politico ran this headline. And we're not saying it's a bad headline. We're saying, do the same for France. The Western media has been handling France with kid, kid gloves. No explosive headlines, no incisive editorials. It's all been rather nice and polite. The New York Times even ran this informative report. Traveling to France, here's what you need to know about the protests. Such coverage comes from inherent racism. Any unrest in the West is an anomaly for them. But any unrest in Asia or Africa is the norm, and most likely the government's doing. The result of state-sanctioned oppression, as they put it.